Steve. It's time. The penultimate season of Stranger Things has finally arrived, and just as expected, it didn't disappoint. Some describe it as a well-calibrated mashup of disparate influences and tones. It also provided us with a lot of setups in the usual Stranger Things spirit, from its mind-bending sci-fi moments to its Stephen King-like inspired horror and, of course, the 80s retro setting. I can say without a doubt that fans were given a thriller, but in this thriller, there were a lot of references and Easter eggs that I'm sure you probably didn't see spot till now. These hidden secrets could be anything from pop culture references to decade-specific cultural signifiers. You name it. The point is, they were hidden, but we found them for you. So, to appreciate our hard work, do hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. Although I must warn you, there are a lot of spoilers up ahead, so take care with that. Now, if you're all ready, let's get started. I want you to join. Straight out of the first episode, we see an extended scene of a rambunctious paper boy carelessly throwing some rolled up newspapers at suburban houses. These papers hit random parts of the yard, some of which include the window, a chair, and the back of a car. At first, the boy may seem like some sort of juvenile delinquent doing what he knows best, but upon further investigation, it turns out this could be a reference to the 1985 arcade game titled Paper Boy. The game came out a a year before the events of the fourth season took place. It even came out a year later in household consoles, which fit perfectly with the season. And just like its Stranger Things counterpart, the game was all about a paper boy trying to throw newspaper rolls to a designated house. The closer you throw to the house, the more points you'll get, and just like this reference, you'll still get points even if it hits a car or window. While this reference could be a coincidence, I feel the specific details proves it was intentional. It's your favorite isn't it? How are you feeling today? Okay. This one especially shouldn't come as a surprise, because the season was chock full of Marvel X-Men references. One of them was a premiere episode titled The Hellfire Club, which is a reference to a villainous mutant group in the X-Men universe. Then we had two direct references to the telepathy amplifier in the X-Men franchise. The first reference describes an improvised computer used to track Eddie, and the second was a Nina project, a machine used to regain an amplifier. Eleven's powers. We can't mention popular movies in the 80s without including the original Star Wars trilogy. And from this time to the prequel trilogy, a lot of ancillary materials was created to dwell deeper into the story. Some of these materials were based on OG characters like R2-D2, which was titled Droids, and another one was based on Ewoks. So if you had an eagle eye, you might have noticed Jonathan Byers watching snippets of Ewoks in Episode 3. Of course, that's not exactly an easy point to spot on the first go, which is why we did it for you. How much longer? Oh, just a few more hours, almost there. You and your husband have exciting plans. This Easter egg was made in reference to the 1984 horror film, which has Freddy Krueger in it. This psychopathic, knife-fingered dream demon invades the thoughts of his victim and uses their fears or anxieties to kill them in real life. But the main Easter egg in Stranger Things is the fact that the actor was cast in the series as Victor Creel. Although his role was more sympathetic than the one we are used to, he still put up a performance. Some even say that the murder Victor was framed for was probably the work of Freddy before he came into the limelight. Either way, it was still a cool Easter egg. I'm gonna need a food delivery, like, really soon, unless you want me going out into the world. No, 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 no don't do that. The popular role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons have been a pivotal part of Stranger Things for a while now. I mean, the pilot episode even starts with the main cast Dusty, Mike, Lucas, and Will playing the game. So, so it's kind of a big deal. Throughout the series, they've used it to defeat villains on the Upside Down, and in this fourth season, they've used it to understand Vecna, a villain they named based 
on a character in the game. But the real reference goes deeper than that. You see, in the 80s, activities like playing Dungeons and Dragons were considered an evil act on the supernatural side of things, and the concept even heated up following the rise of the evangelical movement at the time. At one point, even the famous American cartoonist Jack Chick jumped on the anti-Dungeons and Dragons bandwagon. So, to support the movement, he wrote and drew the art known as Dark Dungeons, which portrays a girl that controls people with spells she learned from Dungeons and Dragons. Now back to episode 2, Stranger Things 4. We got a similar hypothetical concept from Jason when he describes his girlfriend Eddie as dangerous. As you already know, Eddie is known as a D&D player, so it's not really hard to find the ties here. This is Hellfire Club, not Babysitting Club. I'm a loving you long-haired freak. My, my. The child speaks. Stranger Things Season 3 ended with what looked like an intended sacrifice by Hopper to stop the encroaching upside down. But after the credit scene, it was revealed that he's still alive but held captive in a Russian prison. All of these set an ensuring plot for Joyce and Murray in Season 4, as they try to rescue their friend from the Soviet Union. In their attempt, they have to deal with spies, double crosses, and even use disguises, all of which are common feats in the Mission Impossible movies and series. For those who haven't watched it, the Mission Impossible series is a 60s adaptation of the Cold War. It even has an 80s reboot, which so happens to be in the decade that Stranger Things is set. Hey, what are you going to meet you there? So you heard from them? Yeah. They arrived last night. A lot of the modern-day fantasy stories owes a lot to the entire Lord of the Rings franchise. The story centered around multiple fantasy races on a quest to destroy a magical ring before an evil warlord uses it to control the world. In Stranger Things, we got to see this reference in the penultimate episode of Season 4 when Eddie compares stopping Vecna to stopping that character as well. Another main easter egg is the similarity between the Upside Down and Mordor. Although the landscape looks different, the concept looks similar. I'm pretty sure if you watch Lord of the Rings, you'd understand what I mean. I could restore balance to a broken world. A predator. At first glance, the grandfather clock seems out of place in the entire fourth season of Stranger Things. Its true reference became clear later on in the series. While this was a reference to the Creel House, where one first discovered his psychic powers, it was also a reference to Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. In the novel, the man known as Jonathan Osterman became the Dr. Manhattan after a particular accelerator ripped his body into atoms. But thanks to this exposure, he was able to reconstruct himself into the godlike superhero he is now. However, the comics suggest that Osman's father, who was a watchmaker, gave him the knowledge that helped him reconstruct himself. While it was a topic still up for debate, the Stranger Things audience saw it a lot clearer after one described his backstory to Eleven and Nancy, during which a song from the 2009 Watchmen film plays in the background. But the main takeaway was that the clock was a reference to both Dr. Manhattan and the Doomsday Clock that was referenced in the comic. Although this concept seems unlikely, Likely, I have reasons to believe it, especially since the comic was published in the same year that season 4 took place. You know, I think there's a part of you buried somewhere deep. Although the anime didn't come out until 1988, the manga did come out in 1982. The story is centered around a group of children with psychic abilities. These children are monitored, controlled, and experimented on by government agents, much like Eleven and her group. But the real reference comes when a child escapes and destroys the whole of Tokyo. That, of course, sounds similar to One's fate right now. Just like One, he eventually gets overwhelmed and horribly disfigured by his ability. Abilities. One also bears striking resemblance to him in his disfigured form. I mean, just look at one's anime style like hairstyle. If that isn't telling enough, I don't know what is. No, no, get back here! No, 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 no. Do it! I guess it's just a minor misdemeanor. Hey, no, no! There you have it. Did we miss out on any hidden reference or Easter egg you might have spotted? We would be excited to know in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one. We will have more daily videos coming your way very soon. But until then, stay safe, drink water, and have a great day. Bye now. Angela!